Um, hi everyone, thanks for coming to this talk. Uh, before we start, I'd like to gently remind you to switch off your cell phones and to ev evaluate this session at the end. Um, this is my first talk at GDC Europe and your feedback will be very valuable for me, so please do that at the end. Uh, I'm Pavel, I'm Director of Research and te uh, Development Technology at Techland. And um, I came to you from Wroclaw, which is located in Poland. And I'm going to give you some insights about Dying Light game. So the title for the session is four and a half million players within 100 days. There are two important takeaways for this talk. So you'll learn what are, what are the most important aspects of successful game before the release, what have we done before the release to make it successful, and then how to increase the game virality and visibility to make a great commercial success. So things we've done after the game is being released to the market, to the, to the uh, platforms. So the agenda for this talk is as follows. Uh, I'll give you some very brief background about myself and Dying Light game. And then we'll jump into the meat of the presentation. So we'll, we'll be talking about things before and after release. And hopefully at the end we'll have some time for questions. So please stay tuned. About me, uh, I'm a director of research and technology development, which means I'm doing pretty much everything in a company, which means I'm responsible for stuff like defining vision and goals for technology development, advising the business development and supporting internal teams in terms of te technology decisions. Uh, I'm also conducting research and conducting scientific and technological centers like hardware manufacturers and so on and also managing internal teams, running inter-program, hiring people, and all stuff connected with game development. Uh, at last, but not least, I'm working very closely to game teams, uh, so I try to provide the best technology for, for game teams that they could take benefit from. Yeah, a lot of stuff, but I believe strongly in synergy between business, art, science, and technology. That's why really, I really enjoy my work. Okay, so first question, have you played Dying Light? Please raise your hand. Okay. And who hasn't heard about the game at all, like for the first time here? Okay, cool, just three people, okay. So I'm going to show you a very short, like 60 second video clip about the game, so it will like remind you what the game is about. But first, uh, why video clips are good for the presentations like this? So there is a Chinese proverb which says that word, word is worth 10,000 words. So if we have a 60 seconds trailer at 25 frames per second, it gives us uh, one and a half thousand pictures. That is 15 million words, right? I'm speaking to you right now at 180 words per minute, approximately. So I would need almost one and a half thousand hours to talk about this video clip. So uh, let's save some time and see the trailer. Okay, so this was something we've done before the release, of course. Uh, yeah, and now it's a very good time to jump into that uh, part of the presentation. So we'll start with the things that we've done before. First, we try to, clear, to do the clear communication of the game features. So there are certain game features in the game which are really like the face of the game. Uh, for example, in the, our, one of our first major features was the melee combat. So uh, in the game you can kill zombies in many different ways. 
like using weapons, traps, environment, uh, world objects. You can kill zombies by kicking zombies, jumping out of them. And we really made, we put a lot of effort to make killing fun. So that was our first feature. The second feature of the game is that uh, you don't have to use the first feature. So you don't have to fight zombies, you don't have to kill zombies if you don't like to. Uh, instead, you can use player parkour style of moving across the world. Uh, and we call this feature the natural movement. So it means that you can jump over the zombies, you can push them, kick them, you can climb the building smartly away from the zombies, uh, you can use grappling hook to very fast and uh, quickly and efficiently move around the world. So the second feature is, um, is something that you can use the first feature or you can combine them together. So it works really, really great. Uh, the third one is the night. So during the night, the gameplay changes. Zombies are more scary, more powerful, much more dangerous than during the, night, the, the day. And you should really avoid the night if you want to survive. There are new types of zombies, for example, like volatiles, which are chasing you always when you're looking back. You need to use your flashlight, which limits your field of view, which is even more scary. Uh, and we call the feature Hunter by Day, Prey at Night. And really, we try to make the game feature strong and visible for, for everyone. And the last feature I'd like to mention about is the co-op play. So you can explore the world of Haran, which is the main location in the game. Uh, with other players, up to four players, and people really love that. Apart from the co-op play, you can play in players, player versus player mode, which we call be the zombie mode, uh, when you can be a hunter chasing human controlled by other players. And that was one of the major things that, uh, major thing that we did before the release. So apart from the feature, we were showing the features. We were not afraid to show uh, like the one minute of the gameplay. It's not a trailer, it's a gameplay, right? The video that, the, the, that you have seen, it's a gameplay video. It's not a like, trailer for marketing purposes. It's the gameplay and we, we're showing each week new game feature or the features that can be combined together to create the new gameplay for the game. And we call the, those features dying highlights. So to keep it interesting, we weren't afraid to show a bit of humor as well. And one of the clips that was in a Dying Highlights was the, the clip that you saw, saw uh, um, two minutes ago. And also, I'd like to demonstrate you another clip, which is very popular and a little bit humorous. Uh, and it's a clip about traps you can use to kill the zombies in many different ways. So as you can see, it's not, not only the melee fighting and the natural movement, you can also kill zombies using like the environment and uh, different like objects in, in the world. Uh, the next thing I wanna mention is uh, that our in-house technology really worked for us. So apart from those four game pillars I've mentioned, um, we're having our own tech and it's really great like advantage for us. Uh, we are being developing the tech for 15 years right now, and it, it gives us great flexibility and advantage. Like, we decide uh, which platform are we are targeting, which game features we would like to like, bring to the higher level to, to support games, and really, that's, that's, that's great, right? So, we have physically-based shading, advanced post-processing, us, uh, the photorealism is really important for us, so we decide which features should support the game and how. Of course, based on our engine, so the rendering stuff, the physics stuff, and so on, we have also in-house made tools. And this is 
something that gives gave us extra advantage, right? So uh, we can create the city like you see on the, in this picture quite easily uh, by using the special feature which is called hierarchical selections. Unfortunately, I don't have time to, to go through that, but uh, if we have some time for questions, you can ask me about that and I'll try to explain it in a in, in, in few words. Uh, but in general, it's some kind of a way to build a world in a hierarchical way and in semi-procedural way. So we can just clone some groups of objects which can vary a little bit to build the city which looks like this. Okay, so this is something we've done before the release, then it's release day, so everyone is exhausted, but it seems that the real fun is just about to start. So we really wanted to take care of things such as keep the player engaged in our game, so it's not only, not only a one-shot game, keep the product fresh and viable in full price, and stick to our goal like long-term investment in player support, and what we did, what we did to, to achieve that. First, we have used the PLS system, it's post-launch system, we call the system like that. So we wanted to gather data from users, like the telemetry, but it's only a 50% of, of the success. We've provided the system, this system provides the, the ability to do the real-time patches, game patches. So if we gather the data from users, we can tweak on a daily basis game balance, like game scripts, for example, so we can we, we have the whole loop, so we can see how the changes progresses by changing the scripts, getting data, and then it's a closed loop, and we can just uh, make the game better and better on a daily basis or a few times a day, even. Uh, it also allowed us to, to use some uh, event-type, event-based uh, actions like new achievements, challenges, or, for example, 1st of April power-up, when we just increase the power of fists and, and kicks, and you can just kick the zombie like for a few kilometers away from, from, from the player. So it, it really worked for us. Of course, we have implemented the PLS system before, but we use that after the game is being released. This is the example stats from like the screenshots from the tool that we've used for, uh, for telemetry. So as we can see for PC players, there is a, like something between uh, 35 and 40 percent of retention. Um, so the people really completed the game, was returning to the game and completed the game after, uh, after the whole gameplay, and it's really unlikely to have an open world game. So it was, it was a, good, uh, like a good sign for us. Here are some other stats that you can take a look, like for example, distance traveled. It's something like uh, 700 ways from Earth to Moon. Uh, but also we can see from the stats, like Martin Green, what, that uh, lock picking is quite well balanced. So still there are more players who were able to, to pick the locks. And uh, maybe we can see from the stats that dissolved in acid, zombies dissolved in acid is quite low. So maybe we should like teach the players to do so. Or maybe there are two little places when you can kill the zombies that way. So we, can, we know that from, from our telemetry and we can balance it in real time. Okay, so that was the, the white aspect of telemetry, so we were gathering like statistic data from the users. But then we decided to go very pro-player company. So we were reading feedback on forums, on each forum. We were talking to community via Steam chat and on, the, on the Facebook. We were, we were present in uh, social media everywhere. We were really, really listening to our gamers and try to change the game, uh, taking like the feedback into account, so it was very important for us. And uh, the example for that is uh, that uh, we are always pushing harder to, to the limits of our technology. So uh, we have experienced a lot of issues, like hardware issues for the PC version after the game is being released. And really working with community was a great experience for us because we are contacting individual people who had problems. We are providing the, the beta branches on Steam. They were downloaded the branches, they were tested, said everything is okay, you can go with live we made the patch live. So it really worked for us and we, great, uh, we received a great feedback from community that we're really, really working with people, not only like the tele from telemetry point of view, but also from individual uh, player point of view. And it's, it's, it's a great way of, um, of getting uh, to know about your issues and, and getting you know, better feedback from, from, from community. Worked fantastic. 
Another thing we've done was uh, releasing the de developer tools. So after two months, two months after release, we have released our ed world editor, and uh, people just were able to create the mods for our games, for, for Dying Light games. So we've, uh, we've got right now, after four, four months of release, uh, like 150 maps, for example, so you can extend your gameplay into 30 hours just by playing mods. And uh, yeah, so it was really, really good uh, like direction. So you can see the, the different mods on uh, Steam Workshop. So we, we've done the Steam Workshop integration. There is a lot of stuff going on on the forum. Uh, here are some stats. So we have something like 150K downloads, which is quite good in terms of game visibility and, and virality. And uh, one of the stats for here, which is I guess the most important is the return of investments for generated marketing value. So we put the X, the X amount of money for making the tools available, and we got 10X uh, back in the, in the marketing value bar, but generated like the you know, links, YouTube v uh, views, and Facebook views, and so on. So uh, yeah, it was really, really a long-term investment, and it was something that you should really consider to doing also. Uh, apart from that, so apart from the, the very wide uh, perspective like the telemetry and talking to individual users, we also wanted to reach all potential players. And I really do mean all of them, like even those who buy the game once or twice a year. So we reached to, uh, to Ampisound, a parkour collective, to create a real-time, real-life Dying Light video. The video they created for us attracted over, over 12 million players and uh, views both on the YouTube and Facebook. So really, we started to propagate the zombie culture in, in the mainstream media. media. And it, it worked also just fantastic. So you were just able to read about Dying Light in, in, in really every uh, review and every like journal. So it was, it was great. And uh, the next step we've done was that uh, once the game came out, our focus shifted from just presenting the gameplay into keep the fans engaged. So we just don't want it to showing the gameplay because the players were able to play the game, but we tried to, to do something like the customer word of mouth, but we wanted to, the users to create the content and to share the content. So we decided to create something like um, the community hub when we like asked our fans to participate in gameplay community challenges. So for, for first, for example, we asked our fans to submit a maximum 30 second long gameplay clip that make feel them like a badass. The process was very simple. Upload your clip to the YouTube, tag it with the hashtag badass dying light, and send a tweet with the link in the hashtag. We gave it people a week to send the clips in. And the result was really uh, staggering. So we received hundreds of entries populating YouTube. As a result, uh, Badass Dying Light Tag had over 1 million impressions on, uh, over the Twitter alone. So uh, the best part was that our fans were sending out like, the, the gameplay from the best possible angle, that they were really proud of it. And it really, like, it was the marketing which go viral and great. So digital word of mouth at, at its best, really. Uh, we did some other campaigns like uh, Drink for DLC, and it also go viral. Uh, we, we had also ideas like, and we, we've done the ideas like, uh, the Horan emergency line. So uh, to give a world of dying light a nod to the real life, uh, we set up a real phone number which is located uh, in the game. So it's, it's linked to the Skype account with pre-recorded message, and people were able to find the number and call real Skype to Horan uh, emergency hotline. And uh, before we publicized the number, we had thousands of messages left on Skype uh, account and Reddit threads talking about the number. So we decided to listen to the messages through, and after a week of listening and digging through, we choose the best, most funniest one and create a, a compilation of that. It's on YouTube as well. And once we released the video, our social channels, the fans went, went nuts. Over uh, 100,000 people watched the video, and it seemed just as many people called the number right after. So it was really, really great move. 
uh, and the amount of positive feedback and community support was really staggering. Um, okay, so we don't have much time, so I'll make, try to make a wrap up uh, of uh, all the features that we've done, all the things that, that we've done. So um, clear communication of game pillars, game features. You need to stick to them and work on them for, for the whole production uh, process. Uh, having our own tech was really great advantage for us, and we are not afraid to show the gameplay footage. So we were showing the gameplay features um, just on a weekly basis, and just for three or four months before the release, you can see, you, you, will, you were able to see the game actually as it looks. Uh, we use the post launching system, so both telemetry and uh, patching on, on, on a daily basis. And of course, working with community was, was one of the best shots in, in like the marketing and PR of Dying Light. So uh, it helped us solving hardware issues, making challenges, uh, releasing developer tools, community hub for sharing the best gameplay videos for, for, from our users. And of course, uh, a lot of crazy and creative ideas like Drink for DLC or Skype emerg emergency hotline was, yeah, was working great. And apart from that, we had tons and tons and tons of content updates. And I'm going to show you right now the show, uh, short video about our content updates. So enjoy. Okay, so as you can see, after 180 days after the release, we're still packing the game with updates and people just love that. And we're still working on, on, on more on big content update. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for being here. And if you have any questions, I'm here. I'm also at the business area and we have also our recruitment area so you can find me or my colleagues. And if you have questions, I'm here for you. Thanks.